So let's talk about the uh, EPS foam. Talk a little bit about what it's made out of and how it's made. So this stands for uh, ex expanded polystyrene. Talk about styrene. Uh, styrene is a chemical. It has this structure. It's a uh, here's a carbon atom. Another carbon atom. Six carbon atoms in a ring. And these lines uh, designate chemical bonds between the carbon atoms. Uh, bond glues the atoms together. You can, you can either have one bond between the two carbon atoms or two bonds. It's two bonds. And carbon always has four bonds in total. So here we have three bonds, and here's another bond, this time to a hydrogen ion. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. And this carbon is bonded to another carbon atom, which has two bonds to another carbon atom, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So for example, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. Every carbon atom has four bonds. Every hydrogen atom has one bond. So this is the molecule styrene. And it actually comes from uh, benzene, which is this part of the molecule, uh, and ethylene, which is this part of the molecule. And uh, ethylene and benzene come from petroleum, like most carbon compounds. So this is styrene. What is polystyrene? So, polystyrene is a polymer made up of styrene monomer. So, a polymer is a long linear molecule uh, that has a bunch of monomer molecules strung together in a chain. So, here is a uh, Styrene monomer. Here is another styrene monomer. Spaghetti noodles 
tend to pack tightly against each other so that there's very little space uh, between the chains. So this is a high density polystyrene polymer. Um, that's not EVS, this is a polystyrene. Uh, we still have to talk about the expand part. Uh, let's talk about how expanded polystyrene is made. So we go back to the styrene monomer. And styrene is uh, a liquid at a room temperature. And um, it's oil-like. It doesn't like to dissolve in water. So it's like salad dressing. You have a water part and an oil part. And they separate uh, into separate liquids. So if I had a, a container with water in it, if I added a bunch of liquid styrene, uh, it doesn't disperse or dissolve in the water. It would form a, a, a second liquid phase that uh, doesn't mix with the water. And because the density of the styrene liquid is less than that of water, the styrene liquid floats on the water. That's like salad dressing. If a uh, bottle of salad dressing, the water's on the bottom, the oil's on the top. Um, you have two layers. Now, what you can do is you can shake up the bottle of uh, salad dressing and you can emulsify it. And all you're doing is using mechanical forces to break up the liquid styrene oil into small little spheres of oil that are floating around, surrounded by the water. So if we shake this up into a creamy emulsion, and if we zoom in, we would see that there's little uh, styrene domains. And they're surrounded by, by, by water molecules. They're, they're dispersed in, in liquid water. And if we wait long enough, uh, you know, these things are going to want to fuse with each other and collect because they like each other, they don't like the water. And because they're denser, uh, less dense than the water, they're going to float and rise to the surface. So if we just leave it uh, for many minutes, we're going to end up going back to this. And we can shake it up again and get these little islands of starry liquid surrounded by liquid water. This is called an emulsion. Now, the next thing we do uh, to make EPS is we, we add uh, pentane to this emulsion. Pentane, you know, it's a hydrocarbon, it's like a propane and butane. Um, but pentane at room temperature it is a liquid. Uh, it boils pretty close to room temperature, just a little bit above, but at room temperature it's a liquid. And pentane likes the styrene oily phase, it doesn't like to dissolve the water. So if we add pentane to the system, what happens is the pentane molecules uh, swim around and they find themselves inside the pyrene domains. Okay. So this is just styrene monomer. It hasn't been polymerized yet. Little domains of styrene monomer floating around in water, dispersed in water as an emulsion with pentane uh, soaked up into the styrene. So now what we do is we add what's called an initiator. And this is, I'm not going to get into the chemical details, but this causes the double bonds of styrene to link up to form the single bonds. This causes the polymerization of styrene to form polystyrene. But this occurs within the styrene-rich uh, liquid domains. Okay. Um, and so what you end up with is hard spheres of polystyrene uh, impregnated with pentane. Um, and now what we do, it's, it's just like popcorn. We uh, heat the water up and the pentane starts to boil because it's low boiling. And it's trapped inside the uh, spaghetti noodles that are all close to 
to each other, and it wants to expand because it, 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 it turns into a gas, and you know a gas has a much larger volume than, than, than the liquid form. So the hard spherical polystyrene sphere essentially expands just like popcorn. It, it, in fact, it expands about 20-fold in volume. So now we end up with this big sphere of expanded polystyrene. And uh, you know, we, did, we didn't add any more molecules uh, to the sphere, but, so it must be, it must be uh, highly porous. Uh, the spaghetti noodles must be much further apart. Uh, and so this is, this is an expanded polystyrene. It's, 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 it's kind of like it's a foam, essentially. You know, foam has a lot of pores in it, a lot of air. So this is, these are the expanded polystyrene beads. Um, and if you, if you ever take a, a styrofoam coffee cup and look at it closely, you'll see a bunch of beads that are a few millimeters in diameter that are all smashed together to form the coffee cup. Okay, so now what we do is we, we, we filter off these uh, expanded beads. Actually, they float to the top. They're like little floats. Get rid of the water. And now we take all these expanded beads and we pack them into some sort of a bowl, uh, like, a, like a metal box. And here are these beads. We pack them in, we, we put a top on the box and we apply pressure, and we bring the beads to a certain desired density. Um, so EPS that's used to make surfboards is typically Density of um, two pounds per cubic foot. Okay. And then we inject steam into this box, and the steam heats up the expanded polystyrene beads. And this causes them to uh, chemically stick to each other. What's going on is the uh, spaghetti noodles that form this expanded polystyrene bead under the influence of the hot steam, they, they, they start to unwind. They, they start to come apart uh, and stick out from the surface of the bead. Here's another one. And then these tentacles, they tend to entangle among themselves. Okay? And as we cool, cool this down, the, uh, the tentacles start to shrink. But at that point, uh, the beads are tightly fused together. And of course, this occurs in the three dimensions, right? And so what we get is this coffee cup, styrofoam, uh, this expanded polystyrene EPS. Uh, and we can make it at a density of two pounds per cubic foot, which is typically used to make surfboards. Uh, coffee cups would be a uh, lower density, more like 1.3 or 1.5. Uh, surfboards typically two pounds per cubic foot. So that's what EPS means, expanded polystyrene. It's a long linear, chemically connected array of styrene monomers. Uh, so we call it polystyrene. It's been expanded by pentane into uh, a very low density, highly porous sphere. These are then packed together in a mold and heated up, and then the sphere is fused to form the mass of the EPS object. <laughs>